In this part nine of our troubleshoot a computer series, we're gonna troubleshoot the hard disk drive or any other main drive like an SSD and finding out if after a successful post, your computer is still not booting up into your main operating system. That means everything from the computer case, power supply, motherboard, CPU, RAM, graphics card, all the relevant cables and your monitor are actually working so you have some sort of display on your monitor it's looking like it's going to boot up but it doesn't do so so we're going to deal with two scenarios a dead drive or a dying disk and we're also going to take a look inside a drive to see whether we can identify and fix some possible issues coming up roll the intro <laughs> Hey name tags and welcome this is Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. So just to make it clear again in this part 9 we are assuming that your computer is turning on there are lights and there are fans spinning you do have a successful pause but you're not booting up on your computer which means we're going to deal with the physical aspect of the drive and not the software on the drive like the main operating system like windows for windows for the os for software problems we're going to deal with that in part 10 which is going to be the next one so watch out for that one the reason i'm stressing on this is because some people including some dodgy shops think that by just reinstalling windows all your problems is going to get resolved that's not true if you have a drive which is about to fail and certainly not true if you've got a dead drive also to bear in mind the troubleshoot between the two types of drive a mechanical and ssd is slightly different in terms of noise we'll get to that later and of course a huge disclaimer if you've got sensitive data on your drive and you haven't backed up shame on you but if you really want to get your data off and you're not very sure about how to proceed you should try and consult a professional like a data recovery center but do bear in mind they do cost quite a lot of money so if you don't have sensitive data and if you want to give this a go let's go ahead at your own risk so first we need to access bios or uefi and uh, the way to do this is by pressing the delete key or f2 key or f10 key or esc key whichever is your case in mine is going to be the delete key okay once you're there this is a more modern uefi uh, layout you may just have a simple bios older version layout which is not a problem now you have to find probably in the advanced tab or it could be on the boot order tab whatever it is in my case here if i just click on settings and i'm going to look for something like there you go i've got a boot tab so we're going to click on that now on here because this is uefi it's a bit more complicated than the older bios but still we can work through it on this desktop i've got two different drives now if you're at this stage and uh, you can see no drive whatsoever and i've done a video on this before you can check out that link up there and we did not detect a single hard drive then it would mean that there's a problem with your hard drive okay uh, or it could be a problem with inside your desktop which we'll figure out later on but at this stage just make sure you can find a drive which is actually being detected okay now sometimes you may find that the boot order of that drive has been changed Let's take a look at here for example my hard disk drive vbs priorities here i've got two boot options first there is a sand disk okay and then in boot option two there's the hitachi which is a storage drive now my sand disk has got my windows and uh, that needs to be the correct first boot option selected in some cases it's not enough for you to just have the correct drive selected but like in this case here, if you go to the UEFI hard disk drive BBS priorities and as boot option one, you also need to have something called the Windows Boot Manager selected as the first boot order. So just make sure you look through all the settings of your boot option and the boot order. If for a chance that your boot order has been changed, just make sure you select it and place it as the first boot priority and hopefully that will resolve the problem. But if at this stage you have looked everywhere, you still cannot detect your drive, then we're going to move to the next step. Okay, now let's assume your BIOS hasn't recognized your hard drive. So open your desktop. As usual, the disclaimer, if you're not sure, consult a professional. Otherwise, do at your own risk. This is an old computer, really, really old Intel 775 socket, I believe. And I've only got one drive in there. So as you can see, this is a SATA drive. I've got a SATA data cable here and a power 
cable. So the first thing I would advise you to do is just to make sure all your cables are actually plugged in correctly. The usual hard reset can solve a lot of problems. So what you could do is just unplug everything that you can see, even from the power cable, unplug everything, plug them back, press and hold the power button for at least 30 seconds to discharge everything and turn your computer back on. Hopefully that might resolve the problem. And if that's not successful, let's move on to the next stage. Now you've got one disk drive here. What you could do if you have other power connectors right then i would suggest you swap the power connector because it could be a problem with this power connector so we're going to swap that and then also you could swap the data cable for a different one and if you have this of course bring a different known working data cable plug that in and test your drive again now if you haven't got other data cables and other power connectors on your desktop what you could do is get a different known working drive and then connect the same data cable and the same power connector to this known working drive. Turn your computer back on and if you can see the drive in the BIOS or even if it boots up, if it's a Windows or whatever OS you've got on there, then you knew the problem is definitely with the hard drive. And one last thing you can do if you have access to a different system, disconnect this drive completely and put it into the other system. Go into BIOS, see if you can locate the drive, even boot into Windows, go into disk management, see if you can locate that drive. So those are things you could potentially test whether you have a completely dead hard drive or not. Now for the next step, we're gonna to need to actually open a hard drive and take a look inside the components. Now let's take a look at some types of hard drives you may find in a desktop. Now this is a desktop drive. It is very common. It has SATA ports and SATA connectors as interface. And it's a 3.5 inch drive. Inside you have a platter which spins and a head that reads off the data. And uh, the difference between this one and this one is only in the interface whereby this is the older id interface not the more modern sata ones so this is not much found in desktops anymore but still you may encounter that but the thing to remember is that these two drives they are exactly the same in terms of mechanics and how they operate except for the interface all right but for this tutorial we're going to focus on sata interfaces now this other one is a smaller version of the traditional desktop hard drive. This is a 2.5 inch, you'll find these in laptops usually, but except for the size or format, everything is the exact same as the traditional 3.5 uh, inch hard drive, okay? And then last but not least, you have the more modern SSD, which is similar size, sometimes even smaller than the laptop drives and also has got SATA interface. Now we're gonna open up the drive, but I'm gonna use the small laptop drive since I've already opened the one on the left. Before you proceed, please do remember that if you have data which is very sensitive on your disk and you haven't backed up, number one, you're an idiot, please back up. And number two, do not try to repair any hard drive on your own if you're not a professional. You should be considering sending this to a data recovery center if your data is very, very sensitive, okay? But do bear in mind they do cost quite a lot of money. If not, proceed at your own risk. Now, the label on top is gonna hide a screw and I've already taken that screw off. So this is why I'm gonna use this as an example. But keep in mind that you need the label because there are references on the label that you're gonna need in case you need to find a similar part to replace anything that's not working, okay? Now, to open up any hard drive, you're gonna need a very small screwdriver. There are two types of screws on the hard drive. On the front side, you may have what's called Torx screws, and on the flip side, you may have normal Phillips screws. Now, if you need, I would put a link below for like a screwdriver set like this one, which has got different types of uh, screwdrivers, Torx, Phillips, and flat, etc. Okay, Amazon link as usual. Now, it's very easy. There are on this side, there was about one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, and seven screws, which was Torx, and I removed them, very easy. And on the flip side, there was one, two, three, four, five, and six uh, normal Phillips screws, which I removed, okay. Now, the back of all these kind of hard drives has got a PCB, and this is where the interface is also located, 
and you can't just pick any PCB from any different types of drive because they will not match. Uh, usually the same make and model might match, but you need more than just the correct format. You also need the correct reference. Okay, just bear that in mind. And yeah, by the way, this is a completely different type of interface. This is an even older one, but we don't get them anymore. But the thing to bear in mind is that every mechanical hard drive will have at the back a PCB. Okay. Now inside the casing, if you turn it around on the front cover, which can be easily removed once you've removed the screws, you're going to find that there's a platter which spins, there's a head and some magnets behind the hiding which will move the head back and forth to read off the data. At this stage, of course, um, once you've opened your disk, there's a chance you're going to contaminate it or you can even damage it. So you may want to kiss goodbye to any data on there. Of course, in a lab, they will do this in a control environment. And any of these parts could become defective. There could be scratches on the disc. The head could become stuck. There's a number of different kind of symptoms that could indicate a dead or a, a failing hard drive. Now, one thing you can do in your diagnostics, if you power up your hard drive, if there's actually power, then try to feel whether inside the disc is there any spinning action happening. Also try to listen for some type of noise. Different noises on a hard drive will indicate different problems. There's this website you can refer to and try to compare the noises to possibly diagnose which type of problem you may have. Also on YouTube, you will find there are some videos which have shown how to open up a hard drive and how to possibly fix a head which was stuck. It can work, it will not work in all cases. Just bear that in mind. Now, if you compare this with an SSD, now in the SSD, because there are no mechanical parts, literally what you're going to find is you're going to find a PCB that's already got the interface integrated just like this. And if you open this case, and I don't want to open this one because this is a working one, but if you open this case, you're going to find a PCB similar to this, maybe without the circle there uh, taken off. And it's going to be a lot more difficult to diagnose in terms of sound because obviously there are no parts that's moving. So essentially, I would say that in a hard drive, there are three or maybe four levels of failure you could potentially find. You can have a faulty PCB. You could have any of the internal mechanics, which is not working. Or the third one is obviously going to be coming from your desktop or your connectors, could be your data cable or your power cable. So there are three or four, depending how you look at it, levels of failure. Now, what is important to remember is if your BIOS is detecting something, okay, but it's not detecting your hard drive, like if you go into this part, I'm going to show you later, that would just mean that the disk inside is damaged, but the PCB is still working correctly. In that case, if you only swap the PCB for a different PCB, it's not going to resolve your problem because the computer is recognizing the PCB. However, sometimes if you have no evidence of any movement inside the drive, nothing is spinning, nothing is clicking, it is possible that the PCB is dead. And in that case, it is possible you can repair your drive by just swapping out the PCB with the same one. Do bear in mind, some professionals, they don't recommend to do this because in some types of disk, there is a micro code which links the PCB to the drive. And without advanced equipment, you can't copy, rewrite or repair that. But it can actually work in theory. You know what else have we got to lose? Obviously, for that, you're going to need the references on there for the exact same hard drive. Something else you could do if you plug in your drive into a different system, go into the command prompt. And you do this by finding CMD in the search bar and make sure you right click and run it as administrator. And once you're there, you could uh, type in disk part. And once you're in disk part, type in list disk. This essentially is going to list all the disk which is being recognized by Windows. Now, in my case here, I've got disk 0, 1, 2, and 3. That's four disk which are connected and are working. The other two, they are not connected. So I know they're all functioning fine. And obviously, you can always check into File Explorer as well. And uh, if you see if you can detect uh, the problematic drive into a different system, you can also open up your disk management by right clicking on the windows icon and then select disk management and as you can tell i've got one two three and four disk here and the other two are not working which is the same as a disk part on command prompt you can also type in list volume 
and that would be slightly different to the disk because each disk would have more than one volume this is to do with partition and again we can double check that with our disk management for example in my first disk i've got one two three and four different partitions so essentially what that means is if in disk part you can see your disk but windows is still not recognizing it as a drive that means that the pcb on the hard disk drive is working and windows is recognizing the pcb but not the actual disk drive which could be dead of course if you have a drive which is actually failing but not dead yet there are some tools you could use some of them will come within the manufacturer's own bios setting you could click on a couple of things when you access bios and check for the disk if not you can use a third party software one that i've used before is called c tool for windows if i'm not mistaken and it's a free software you can uh, go to the link and download the software and install that. Once you've installed it, you can open it. So once you launch it, it's gonna scan your computer for all kinds of drive and accept. And on my computer right now, again, remember we had one, two, three, and four different drives. Now there are various kinds of tests you could do. Uh, for example, if I wanted to test the SSD here, I could just click on that and uh, go here and do some basic test. Now you can read up a bit more about the different types of tests you can do on there, but two I would recommend would be a short generic one to quickly test. However, that may not be very conclusive. A longer generic test will give you any problematic fault on there and whether it can be repaired or not. I've done this before and it did eventually find problems and I was able to replace a disc before it died. Now there is one repair which I did not include in today's tutorial and that's to do with bad sectors repair using a command like check disc. Bad sectors can happen on a disc on a disk which is about to die and it can in theory repair some aspects of the disk not all the time but because we're going to deal with the software side in the next episode which is going to be part 10 and we're going to try to repair the boot partition or the bcd so i will include the disk check or the check disk to repair some bad sectors because we're going to have to boot from probably an installation disk anyway and a lot of people don't have access to a second computer to be able to do that and there are two ways to do it you can do it within a drive which is actually failing as long as you can reach the command prompt or you can do it from an installation disk and then select a different uh, drive for your repair so we are now at the end of today's tutorial thank you so much for watching i uh, have been away for a long time i'm back now hopefully and we are going to try and finish the series in part 10 we're going to be dealing with essentially uh, repairing uh, issues to do with windows itself or the boot partition for windows and do remember, if you are a bit confused about today's video, there are eight previous videos to do with what to check for for a successful post. Otherwise, none of today's video is going to make sense because you can't really check for the disk if you don't even have a post. So go back and watch out the Troubleshoot series up there in the uh, card and also in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, you know what to do down below. Leave me a comment, give me a like, and consider subscribing. Enable the bell icon notification if you've not done so yet. As always, this was a pleasure. This was Ash from Hilmai Tech helping you. Go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out. Shhh. <laughs>